Kentucky basketball continues to add on to their very impressive 2024 class with the commitment of Billy Richmond. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be discussing the commitment of Billy Richmond, five-star wing, four-star wing, depending on where you look. Really interesting prospect I want to dive into today. Talk about his game, his strengths, his weaknesses, where he fits in in this 2024 class. Speaking of that class, it's looking pretty solid. I want to talk about the different guys uh, that we have for next season and how the roster could shake out. And then finally, a question that I want to ask to you guys on today's episode that we'll talk about in the third segment, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below or on the socials at Locked on UK on Twitter. Can Kentucky make the final four? And if so, how are they going to get there? Thank you so much for making Locked on Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. If you're listening on podcast, I would really appreciate it. If you subscribed there as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Billy Richmond, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite Ratings, he is a five-star prospect, top 25 player nationally, number five shooting guard in the country, number two player in the state of New Jersey. Richmond committed yesterday before the Louisville game. Did not have time to talk about it because we are doing that recap episode of that thrashing of the cards. But now we get to talk about Richmond, who, if you don't know, played at Camden High School with current Kentucky Wildcats, DJ Wagner and Aaron Bradshaw, six foot five, 200 pounds. When you watch this kid's game and you look at the scouting reports on him, it becomes very clear that although he is tabbed as a shooting guard, according to 24 seven sports, you look at this player and see more of a wing type of aspect, a three small four type of aspect to his game. And I think the way that I would describe it, some YouTube channels out there and his highlight reels have described him. And then we're going to talk about what Adam Finkelstein, the uh, director of scouting, had to say about uh, Richmond today as well. He is a slasher, a borderline pure slasher. If he was just a little bit taller and a little bit more on his frame, I mean, you you could see that, that, that that's just simply what he does. The strengths of Billy Richmond's game slashing to the basket and finishing at the rim. I was really impressed in some of his highlight reels, not just throwing down dunks in transition and doing all of these different things in this fast-paced type of uh, EYBL circuit or at Camden or what have you, but he really did in the half-court game uh, show a lot of strength when it came to finishing at the rim and finishing with layups. Uh, I I was impressed with the different things that he did whenever he caught the ball, was able to very quickly... Uh, diagnose the defense, and then get to the rim and score. And I think that's something that you see similarly uh, across the board with some of Kentucky's prospects that they're playing with this season, i.e. Justin uh, Justin Edwards. I think you see some similarities between their, their games here, and we'll talk about the shooting in a second. That's probably the biggest negative between both of these guys, honestly. Um, but but Richmond does show a lot of strength, both in the upper and lower body when it comes to finishing through contact and then strongly taking the ball to the basket. At six foot five, you like to see that. He's also listed, it's interesting, he's listed as a small forward on 24 7, but he's he's rated as a shooting guard. So, kind of a tweener here. I'm not quite sure where he fits into the lineup next season, whether it is at that two spot or that three spot. Personally, if I was doing uh, the scouting and the rotations here, wouldn't put Richmond a ton. At the uh, at the two spot, simply because of his lack of consistent shooting, according to twenty four seven Sports, and you can go look at this at the EYBL website as well. Shooting twenty five percent during that circuit, not that great, and then reluctant to take open shots. And I wish I had more film instead of just highlights to see what Richmond actually does in the uh, when he's got the ball in his hands in those moments, because it did look like in his highlight reel there were several moments where he caught the ball 
and would have had the opportunity to shoot, but instead elected to drive it, dish it to, to a teammate, or finish it at the rim himself instead of taking some of these outside threes. And mechanically, there's not a lot to love. Obviously, some things can be fixed, but I don't know if Kentucky's going to want to fix a ton, a ton with his shot because it may not fit in how they want to run him in their system, slashing to the basket. I think he could really work well uh, in John Calipari and John Welch's dribble drive kind of offense. But mechanically, he's very slow uh, to load up his shot. Um, obviously, you see in the highlights him knocking down everything, but there was not a lot to love with his outside shot and how how he he, he loads up. I, I think that you can really work on that throughout your, uh, throughout your um, I guess, final uh, games here in high school. And then obviously during the offseason at Kentucky, he's going to get a lot of conditioning. Also something that you can note could probably put on a little bit more weight to become a little bit more physical, a bruiser type there, maybe at the three spot. He doesn't need to, I don't think, but he could. It's very possible in his future. Defensively, I like the the anticipation. I like the energy. I like the excitement that he brings on both ends of the floor. You really like that with some of these prospects where you see all of these different highlights. Okay, you're like, woohoo, they're running out in transition. They're getting these dunks. They're getting hyped up. But he's extremely competitive on both ends of the floor. I think high motor is one way that you would describe him uh, on both sides. And we have not gotten to discuss that, I think, with several different prospects that Kentucky has looked at. We've not been able to say, okay, we can confidently have this guy as a high motor guy on both ends of the floor. Some kids just want to score. Some kids can't score and only play defense. But I really do think that he does both here through his physicality and through his aggressiveness. I think another positive that you have to take away from Billy Richmond is the fact that he can distribute something that Adam Finkelstein says in the very first sentence of his scouting breakdown. Richmond is a big and athletic lefty wing with developing guard skills. He is becoming better at handling the basketball and then finding his teammates around the rim and for outside shots. I really like some of the ball handling that we saw from Richmond, and I think that's why you see some of these different services tab him here as this shooting guard because he can handle, and he, I think, has the potential to get better as an outside shooter um, the mid-range was consistently there, similar, again, similar to the way that you see Justin Edwards play. And on top of that, the, the similarities grow even more whenever you notice the fact that both these guys are left-handed. It's very similar in the pull-up game, the mid-range game, the floater game, and then outside shot-wise. Um, I think that Richmond brings it whenever he's shooting. His legs are significantly, uh, significantly closer together. His base is much more smaller and much more compact than Justin Edwards whenever actually working on their outside shot. Um, but similar load up, similar different things like that. But Richmond, I think, is growing right now in what he is as a prospect and what he is as a player. And it's going to be fun this offseason to talk about, okay, where does that actually fit in? Where does it fit in in this rotation? Because he could be a two, but also you like him at the three. You may want to go ahead and just run him there at that three spot. I don't know how Kentucky's going to do it, but I think regardless, you're going to have some talent around him. He is the second highest rated player committed in Kentucky's 2024 class, which is currently number two in the uh, in the composite rankings on 24-7 sports. So I think right now Richmond is a great prospect that has the opportunity to grow uh, even further as a player, and he's going to be surrounded with some really talented playmakers uh, on their uh, of their own right. So I want to dive into this 2024 class here in just a second. Talk about these different guys that are committed, what Kentucky may need next season. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Game Time. Let's say, hypothetically, you may be looking next week for some last-minute tickets to the Illinois State game on December 29th, and you're scrambling maybe the, maybe the day before, maybe even the day of the game, you, if you are panicking, trying to find some of these last-minute deals, need to head over to game time because you shouldn't have to worry when you're trying to buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all different events in your area, not just sports, but also music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer, killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and then their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Tickets. They've also got this cool thing called zone deals, which means you can pick the section and game time can pick the seats for you for an average of 18% savings. The game time guarantee, like I mentioned, also means you'll get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, 
Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can get tickets on game time all the way up to the start of the event and sometimes even an hour after the event has begun. It's a really awesome place to go. You need to take the guesswork out of buying tickets and head over to game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Again, download the game time app. Locked on college is the code you need to use there for $20 off your first purchase. All right, continuing along here on the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky Lance Doll, hanging out here with you. One more time, I really appreciate you guys making Locked On Kentucky your first listen. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please, if you're watching here, subscribe. It's going to be a really, really fun SEC slate for Kentucky basketball. And if you're listening on podcast, subscribe to whatever feed you are uh, you are you're watching, whatever feed you are listening to, whether it be Spotify, Google. Apple Podcasts, et cetera. Really appreciate the podcast listeners out there. Uh, and if you want to ask me any questions, YouTube, uh, podcast, et cetera, you can hit me on the socials at Locked on UK, or you can leave questions in the comments below. And I do have a question for you on today's episode, and we'll get into this again later on in the show. But do you think this current team, Kentucky basketball's current team, can they make the final four? Not will they make, can they make the Final Four? And if so, how would they get there? I want to know your thoughts in the YouTube comments below. At Locked on UK on Twitter is where you can find me. If you want to tag me in a tweet, if you want to DM. All right. Kentucky's 2024 recruiting class is looking pretty solid. Across the board, you've got some height, some physicality down low. You've got a pretty solid, straightforward point guard. You've got... Another point guard in Boogie Fland who could also play at that combo guard spot, play at that shooting guard spot. And then you've got Billy Richmond, a fun wing that you could uh, that you could work with here. I don't think that this is a uh, this is you you could look at this and say, oh, this is a starting five for next season because you don't have a true power forward here committed. <coughs> Excuse me, still dealing with uh, with a cough here over these past couple of weeks. Uh, it has just plagued me, but. You have a near complete lineup. And I think with some pieces from this year's team that may return next season, you could have a really solid lineup. So let's start here from the top. Let's work with the best player according to the rating system and let's work our way down. Starting with Jaden uh, Jaden Quainance, the uh, 6'9, 230 pound center committed out of Raleigh, North Carolina, top 10 player nationally, was looking at Missouri, was looking at committing to the Tigers and ended up committed to uh, committing to the Wildcats at six foot nine you may say oh no here we go again with a potential shorter center that we could be working with first of all we don't know if he's going to start Samto Cyril could and he's at 610 I think he's every bit of 610 but uh, uh the, the the positive takeaway here from Quainance is the seven foot three wingspan and he is a massive threat uh when it comes to lobs when it comes to dunks he is just incredibly aggressive uh, and then I think that an, a word that is used in several scouting reports is consistency, uh, which you that's what you see out of Jaden Quinton. So a really, really solid prospect here at the top, top 10 player. Will he start for UK? We'll have to see. Somto Cyril could also be in the mix here. And if Uganda Onyenzo does elect to return, and based on this with these two centers committed, I don't think that he will. That's just my guess. But if he does return, he would also definitely be in the rotation as well. So you're solidified one way or another at your five position if both Cyril and Quaintance do end up committing. Or, uh, well, they've signed if they do end up playing here, I should say, which you never know what will happen uh, with some of these different players, uh, even after they do sign their letter of intent. Boogie Flan, top 20 player nationally, number two combo guard, number three player in the state of New York at 6'2". 170. This kid is a shooter. Now, he did not shoot particularly well during the EYBL circuit. Uh, I believe earlier uh, this year, he's a little undersized, but the kid can shoot and he can score flat out. Very fun prospect, very quick prospect. Uh, Somebody that will be a lot of fun, I think, at that two guard spot. They have him listed as a combo guard, but because of the other point guard and because of somebody that may return next season, you may see uh, you may see Fland operate strictly out of that two spot, 
Um, but the way with the way that Cal runs his stuff, who knows? We 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 may not be able to identify it um, with when uh, Fland and somebody else is on the court. Somto Tsiro, the six foot ten, two hundred and forty pound prospects at, out of OT Elite, a uh, really solid uh, player here. Aggressive defensive player is what you're getting. No, a top fifty prospect nationally, or excuse me, top fifty five prospect uh, nationally, according to the twenty four seven Sports composite ratings. Top ten center. Top six player in the state of Georgia. So you've got your offensively, I think, uh, skilled player in Jaden Quaintance. Defensively, Tom Totes Hero, I think, is going to bring a lot to the table for you as well. Not saying Quaintance won't either. I think both of them will. But uh, but you've got a nice combo here. A nice one-two punch uh, down low next season, potentially. And then your true point guard, Travis Perry, who is uh, the final player here who has signed his letter of intent Outside of uh, outside of uh, let's see, Billy Richmond is the only player that's not signed yet. Uh, Travis Perry, true point guard here, um, not the flashiest player, and we talked about this whenever this kid did commit uh, just a few weeks ago. I think it was a little over a month uh, ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not not necessarily tall, six foot one, um, not the most explosive in transition. Um, can handle the ball pretty well. It's kind of the fundamentals and the fact that he's consistently in his highlight reels and the scouting reports. Uh, I believe the 24-7 sports ca- uh, scouting report is he always is just making the right plays. He is always just in the right spot, and he's a really smart player, and he just ends up making everyone around him better. Uh, Reed Shepard-ish, I guess you could say, but I think Shepard is more athletic, uh, if I had to guess, uh, when it comes to you know uh, jumping, the way that he runs in transition, different things like that. But top 100 prospect, four-star guy, uh, Travis Perry, out of the uh, out of state of Kentucky, Lyon County, uh, Lyon County High School, and uh, Eddieville, Kentucky. So across the board, you've got two guys that are really solid at your five. You've got a combo guard that I think will play at shooting guard. You've got a pure point guard who I would not bank on starting next year. That's my guess. And then you've got a guy that I think would play will play the three. So that leaves your four. And it maybe it, it, it leaves somebody else, I think, to play that point guard spot. Here's what I'm going to guess right now. And this may end up being wrong, considering the player I'm about to talk about may end up being a lottery pick this year. But this is how I think things may shake out. I think if Shepard comes back, if Reed Shepard comes back, he's your starting point guard. If you can get another shooting guard, maybe VJ uh, Edgecombe, maybe somebody else, maybe a transfer, who knows. I think you may take that just to kind of have some depth here because Fland is a little undersized and could play combo guard. Um, who knows? Maybe Fland starts at point. That that that, that could be the case here. Um, last year, I thought Wagner would be a shooting guard or the backup point guard. I thought Dillingham was going to be starting at the point. So who knows? Maybe that's how this rotation works out. Um, but I think, just guessing, Shepard's your one, Fland or someone else can be your two. Your three is Billy Richmond or possibly a Duthiero if you just want to get weird with it or a transfer. Maybe that maybe that's what you're going for here is a transfer and then Billy Richmond. A Duthiero I think can very well be your starting four and you can be okay with that. And then your starting five is either going to be Quaintons, Cyril, or Onyenzo if he does come back, which again, I would not guess he does considering there are two centers coming in. In, uh, in next year's class. So you have a rotation, possibly. And, and then Jordan Burks is also going to be here um, to back up at the four. So you have a potential solid rotation next year with some holes to fill. But obviously, considering it's December, you don't really have to do that right now. You're also in the middle of a potentially really, really special season. So we'll keep tabs on it. But I think Kentucky's doing a good job right now kind of identifying their different players uh, for next season. But considering, like I mentioned, we're in the midst of a potentially, potentially special season, I do want to wrap up the show today talking about a question that I asked you guys on social and I want to ask you guys today. Can Kentucky make the Final Four? Before I dive into that whole thought, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. As the weather gets colder here, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. 
And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options from spreads to player props, over-unders, and more. So you need to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off your NFL season. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, wrapping up the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky, a question to wrap up today's episode that I asked you guys both on YouTube and then also on Twitter. Can Kentucky make the Final Four? Now, obviously, the the question that could have been asked here is, Will Kentucky make the Final Four? But I don't think that that's as fun as can Kentucky make the Final Four because you're making uh, a very uh, difficult uh, prediction there. But I asked you guys on social, does Kentucky have the ability to? Because I want to see where the Kentucky fan base is at right now. On YouTube, on the community tab, you can go vote on this right now. 160 votes. 96% of you say yes, Kentucky can make the Final Four this season. 4% of you say no, which is really interesting. I am not in that camp. I think Kentucky can absolutely make the Final Four this season. And there are a couple of you in the comments that explained your thought process, and we'll get to that in a minute. On Twitter, 83 votes right now. You can go vote on this on Twitter, at Locked on UK. Can Kentucky make the Final Four? 97.6% of you say yes. Kentucky can, in fact, make the Final Four. Uh, Alex, or Alec uh, Saul. I am so bad with last names. Uh, I'm not even. Um, I'm not even gonna try. Alex says, besides for their depth and skill, what separates this year them this year from others is this uh, team is very unselfish. Really good basketball being played and very fun to watch. Something we said at the beginning of the uh, of the season. We said it a ton this off season. This team's gonna be a highlight reel. They're gonna be a lot, a lot of fun to watch. They're gonna be running up and down the court. But defensively, can they put things together? We'll just have to see. Money Man one Sean on YouTube uh, says in response to this question, honestly, I believe this is the closest we've gotten to matching up to 2012's roster. Although I agree 2015 was indeed good. I can't remember the last time I've seen a Kentucky team share the ball the way they do. And that is, I think, one of the more interesting strengths of this team that Alec also hint, er, pointed at is this team does a phenomenal job of spreading the ball around, distributing it. You go and look on Kim Palm. Kentucky's doing a great, a great job statistically when it comes to assist uh, rel- relative to field goals made. They have several guys on this team that can make it happen, not just at the guard spot. I believe Trey Mitchell is currently second on Kentucky's team in assist per game right now. Kentucky's got the offense. They absolutely do have the offense. But as E and Barrett Abel pointed out on YouTube, this is the sticking point for me as well. As long as our defense improves, we've got a heck of a shot. Um, Bob Smith also says lots of work to do. Keyword is can, and yes, we can. If we frame the question like will they, then I don't know, which is kind of the point I'm getting out here. Um, One person said, doubt it. Let's get out of the first week before we start talking about Final Four Championship. I think it is fun, though, to have conversations about these different things because Kentucky has the potential to be pretty special on paper, they got some really good things going for them, especially on the offensive end. But as a couple of us have pointed out, and as something I've continued to say over and over on this show, it's the defense. Can it improve? Adjusted efficiency-wise, top 50 right now nationally. You need to see that climb, I think, into the low 30s before you really start to feel confident about Kentucky's ability to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Because historically, the best teams that make the Final Four or win the national title are somewhere hovering around top 20 both offensively and defensively, in Ken Palm's adjusted efficiency ratings. And right now, Kentucky's 12th on offense, like I mentioned, 46th on defense. We'll see how it goes in SEC play. And my guess, my guess, is that Kentucky's defense does get better over conference play. Their offense may take a little bit of a dip because defensively, I think the SEC is just going to overall be solid, as they have been in seasons past. And conference play normally does knock your points per game down a little bit in your efficiencies. But anyway, I think you will start to see Kentucky trend in that direction. It's just how much, how much do we see them improve against a team like Texas A&M? 
How much do we see them improve against a team like Mississippi State, who also likes to drive the ball? South Carolina, um, consistently uh, a team that really likes to get to the foul line, as does Arkansas. Um, So we'll see how this pans out. South Carolina also really shooting the three ball well this year, which is uh, interesting. But Kentucky has some challenges ahead of themselves uh, on, on that defensive end. Can you pull out of it now that you have Hugo and Bradshaw? Can you pull out of some of the slumps that you've had earlier this year that led to uh, the loss to Kansas and then the loss to UNC Wilmington, some struggles elsewhere? We'll have to see. But Kentucky absolutely does have uh, the opportunity uh, to do so, and I think that they've got a very legitimate chance, which is why I wanted to ask the question today. So if you have a thought on this, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below or on the socials. I think that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless. Thank you.